Okay, guys. I'm here with my review of the 2001 Survivor Series. Um, the last pay-per-view in the Invasion Angle. Uh, one, and as a disclaimer, while I am not going to bash on this pay-per-view, because I do think match quality-wise it's good, and you'll see that in the review, um, I just don't like any pay-per-view during this angle because of how it made WCW and ECW look. And so... Yeah, I re and I just mm, I don't like any of these pay per views during the invasion angle. But I'm going to be fair to the match quality in this review. So we're live. This pay per view is Sunday night, November the 18th, from the Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina, heart of Flair country. This would have been the best time to debut Ric Flair if you want my opinion, but hey, they waited till the next night to do that. Anyway, there are seven matches on the main card, so this star rating will be a total of 35. Our opening match is the European Championship match, as it's Christian versus Al Snow. Um, not a bad match. I'd say it's about a one and a half star match. Not bad but it's not an a it's nowhere near average or above average so it's in, so it's one and a half stars and Christian wins with the unprettier uh, our second match of the night is William Regal versus Tajiri in a match that quite frankly should have been longer um for what it is it's not bad but I I have to give this a half a star because I think that it needed to be longer. This match should have been longer than it was, and eh, so it's a half a star. Our next match is our first of two unification matches. The WWE Intercontinental Championship and, WCW, and WCW United States Championship unification match, Test vs. Edge. Um, Test is Intercontinental Champion, Edge is U.S. Champion. Uh, not a bad match. Two and a half stars. I don't think it's the best match either these two guys ever had. I think Edge went on to, Edge went on to have far better matches in his career. Um, but this is a two and a half star match. Not bad. But it's just slightly under average. Uh, and Edge wins and unifies the belts. So our fourth match is the second unification match on this show. The steel cage match to unify the WWE and WCW Tag Team Championships. Dudleys are WWE Tag Team Champions, the Dudleys are WCW Tag Team Champions, and the Hardys are the WWE Tag Team Champions. But this match between the Dudleys and the Hardys. Two teams who have had some classic matches, primarily with Edge and Christian, and their matches with each other are not as good as their ones that involved Edge and Christian. Um, which is why in the 2000 Survivor Series review, I basically, which basically in the Royal Rumble 2000 review, um, I said this was a good match, but there could have been better from these two teams, and there were, but it involved Edge and Christian. I've always thought that the Dullies and the Hardys are at their best matches involving Edge and Christian. That's what made them so great. It's, and it's not a, it's nothing against the Hardys or the Dudleys. This match is good, but it's nowhere near the triangle ladder match. The, or either TLC match that they had with Edge and Christian. This is a very good match. It's three and a it's a three and a half star match, but it's nowhere near what they did with Edge and Christian. It's nowhere near that. But that is my opinion. But it is nowhere near near. It. And on top of that, this makes Jeff Hardy look utterly stupid. On top of that, because. I understand where they were going with it, but it makes Jeff Hardy look utterly stupid, and it basically makes him look like all he cares about is doing a swanton bomb for the fans of the winning matches, and that hurts this, and that hurts. But it's a good match, though. Three and a half stars with the Dudleys winning. So, our next match is the Immunity Battle Royal. Um... The first ever Battle Royal in Survivor Series history, and the only one in Survivor Series history. 
Uh, Test had beaten up Scotty Too Hot earlier and took his spot and then Test won this Battle Royal. Uh, Battle Royals are never classic matches because they're basic brawling and fighting. Um, Paul Heyman's commentary about Taz makes this somewhat entertaining, but as a match, it's one star because it's a Battle Royal. Uh, even Royal Rumbles are very rarely five stars. In fact, the I think the only Royal Rumble or Battle Royal type match I've ever given higher than one star to is probably a 1990, uh, or at least more than two stars to, is a 1992 Royal Rumble because that is legitimately... Arguably the greatest Royal Rumble match in the history of the WWE. But, uh, Battle Royals aren't much of anything, so one star here. Uh, so then we get the six pack challenge for the WWE Women's Championship to reinstate it. Three WWE women, three Alliance women. So it's Trish Stratus, Lita, and Jacqueline. It's Trish Stratus versus Lita versus Jacqueline versus Mighty Molly versus Ivory and versus the debuting Jazz. So, you're debuting a person in what is essentially the last night for the company, for the entity they represent, as the main event showed. That's real smart. Yeah, and no one knew who Jazz was, because a, a big problem with the WWE is that they were expecting their audience to know who these people were. So, they weren't trying to do anything to help get these people over their audience. They didn't show vignettes or anything like that about the WCW people or ECW people. They just expected their audience to know that. And that's another problem with the invasion, is that the WWE just basically expected something out of their audience they weren't going to get. Um... Their audience was never going to... It was after this that almost all these people started being loved by the WWE audience. It was after the 2001 Survivor Series. And just after the invasion in general. Uh, so, But this is not the best match in the world. It's a half-star match. Um, so, Trish won. And with that, Trish would start and morph into becoming the single, probably, greatest woman's wrestler the WWE ever had. I mean, or at least on par with Fabulous Moolah or anything. Because she, Trish managed to make the transition from manager to in-ring worker quite seamlessly. She actually became a very good in-ring worker. And it shows she's a seven-time woman's champion. And that says something about her work ethic in some ways. So then we get ultimately to the match that this is mostly remembered for. The Survivor Series Elimination 5-on-5 five -five match between Team WWE and Team Alliance. Team WWE is the, the WCW Champion, The Rock, Chris Jericho, Undertaker, Kane, and The Big Show. And Team Alliance is WWE Champion Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, Booker T, Rob Van Dam, and Shane McMahon. So, three guys who are known primarily from WWE, one guy known primarily through e ECW, and one guy known primarily from WCW, are making up the Alliance team here. Are making up the Alliance. Uh, now, I'm not going to lie. This match is great. It's one of the top ten Survivor Series matches ever. Uh, it's probably the longest Survivor Series match of the modern, of an era that did not involve those big schmazes in 1987 and 88 when you had those, those 20 men tags, which are about 40 minutes each. This match is about 45 minutes. It's a very good match. It's a four and a half star match. Would be five, but I disagree with the finish because I'll get into that. Uh, Big Show's eliminated first when the Alliance do all their finishers to them. Then Shane gets eliminated the same way Big Show got eliminated. Okay, then they eliminate Kane. Then they eliminate Taker. Rock and Jericho then eliminate Booker T and RVD. And it comes down to Rock and Jericho versus Austin and Angle. Um, Angle taps out to the Shark to Rock Sharpshooter. Austin eliminates Jericho, and we're down to Austin and Rock. Uh, Jericho comes in and turns on the WWF and try and turns on Rock. 
But Angle comes in, hits Austin with the WAF Championship. Austin rock, walks into a rock bottom, and the one, two, three happens. Um, so Team WWF wins the match, as everyone knew they were going to. Here's why I disagree with the finish. I think they should have had the finish be, and people can debate this, I think they should have the finish of this be Jericho costing the WWF the victory. Uh, because looking back on it, that would have been the better booking decision for two main reasons. Number one, you would have made Chris Jericho a heel for life in the WWE fans' eyes. Okay, they probably would not even cheer him to this day if that would have happened. He would be basically be the top heel permanently in that company for doing that. And number two, here's the second reason. It would have opened it up to have the unification match of the of the WWE and WCW championships at WrestleMania, which should have happened. Jer by having Jericho's turn be the finish of this match, you set this up for how it should have ended, which is at WrestleMania. This angle should have ended at WrestleMania 18, and Jericho's turn would have helped facilitate, uh, you know, facilitate that. So. But, what you gonna do? Uh, and then on top of that, most of the people they, that they got after the, after the Alliance went dead, most of them weren't given the chance to make their own name in the WWE, or most were just solely misused via no, maybe, and some of it maybe wasn't their fault, like, um, you know, Sean O'Hare is not necessarily the WWE's fault. Sean O'Hare was a guy who had a good gimmick that worked in vignettes that did not work in practicality in 2003 with his Devil's Advocate gimmick. That was a good character for vignettes, but not for practicality. We know what happened to Lance Storm after a while and all that. But this is a four and a half star match, so... Uh, next up is the is Survivor Series 2002, one of only two Survivor Series that have ne that does not have an elimination match on it. The other one, by the way, that does not have an elimination match on it, um, this is only like one of two, and the first this is the second of only two, and the first one was 98 that did not have a Survivor Series elimination match on it. So um, that'll be uploaded sometime tomorrow. Uh, uh, we're going to have 35 total stars for this show. Rating will be down there. Uh, so if you like the video, hit the like button down there. Hit the subscribe button down there. If you want to leave a comment down there about if you think that Chris Jericho, that they should have finished the match with Chris Jericho's turn, or the finish that happened, if you agree with that, because I think that would be an interesting debate. So, uh, thank you for watching this video. Bye.